for you this morning. Jesus is alive. Jesus lives. Jesus resurrected Lord and because he lives, because he lives, because he lives. Oh wow, because he lives you too have life. 
You too have life. You too have hope that will never disappoint. You too have a future with hope. A future with hope. A future with hope. Every single day of for the rest of your life and beyond, you have a future with hope because he is alive. So, Lord God, we thank you for that promise. We thank you for that blessed reassurance. We thank you that you are alive. Hallelujah. And we believe it. Thank you, Lord. We believe it. Thank you for showing us, for demonstrating for us, and for being right there, a, a empirical evidence that yes. you are life, thank that you, you have Lord. victory thank over Jesus. death, and we, as a result, we do too. And the promise is, oh, death, where is thy sting? Yes. Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Praise be Amen. to Jesus Christ thank you, Lord. who gives us that victory. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we thank you that you live. And we are a church that worships and believes and thanks you from the bottom of our heart for that blessed, blessed thank truth. You, Truth, truth, that you are alive. And so, Lord, we ask that you live within our hearts and you give us that life abundant. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to come now to reign in this chapel, to reign in our hearts to reign in our lives, we ask you now to be here, to be that powerful presence because we love you, we adore you, and we worship you and only you. Amen. Amen. And for the next song, go ahead and turn in your songbooks to page 67 for Put Your Hands Up. Again, that's page 67. Psalm 64, 4 says, I will praise you. As long as I live, and in your name, I will lift up my hands. We're going to lift up our hands and Hallelujah. give praise to the Thank Lord. Lord. We're Thank happy to have Isaac back Thank and you. Joel back, too, after a while. Yes, give my hand. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands up, because you, we're here to praise the Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. Woo.
for the next song, we'll be singing The Lord is My Light, and that will be page 53. Again, that's page 53. It's good to get excited about the Lord. Amen. It's good just to give it your all, put your hands up, praise him, Thank you, be Lord. happy. Thank you, Jesus. Because that's what God's word encourages us to do, to be happy, to be joyful, and to worship him. Amen? Amen. Psalms 27, 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. In whom shall I be afraid? Amen? Amen. I look to the hills. I say that all the time. I go outside at night when it's all black and just put my hands up and begin to praise the Lord and say that verse because he's always with us. He will never leave you. And he's right here right now. Amen, Hope Center? Praise the Lord. Through the 
You may be seated. Thank you, worship team, for reminding us it is the Lord that is our light and our salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'd just like to say that Hope Center of Christ is a place where the word of God is sung and a place where it is spoken. And we pray all the time that the Holy Spirit is with us. And he never fails. We're going to be receiving your tithes and your offerings in a moment. That's your monetary tithes. But we also want you to tithe to the Lord with your expression of love to him when you sing and when you throw your hands up and when you worship the Lord. Amen. We know that the Lord will supply all of our needs if we do this one thing is seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Amen? Amen. We have to believe it to receive it. In Jesus' name. Today's reading is from John 14, verses 23 to 28. Now, Jesus has told his disciples that he is going, but he will be coming back. And I'm going to take it up where he has told them that, but they won't understand exactly what he means or meant until they see him again. Okay? It says, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not Obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the adv advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you will be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your word. Thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, that you are our God, our Lord, our Messiah, our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We'd like to welcome our guests and friends, those that are here with us today in the sanctuary, and those that are visiting us via the internet. We thank you for sharing this time with you as we worship our almighty God. As we prepare our hearts for tithes and offerings, dear Heavenly Father, let us remember you would love for us to bring our tithes and offerings to you with a cheerful heart. Amen. And he will honor that. The connection cards. The connection cards in front of you, those orange cards, please feel free to fill them out. Let us know how the Lord is blessing you. Let us know how we can stand in prayer with you. And we give that same instruction to those that are viewing us via the internet that you write us. Let us know how we can pray for you. Also, those that are on the internet, if you go to hopecenteroc.org, we have a website there. You can see how you may want to donate to Hope Center of Christ. And also find a daily devotion written by our pastor and Pastor Katie. Amen. Amen. We do have a final date for our trip to the Holy Land or our visit to the Holy Land. It will be October the 11th to the 19th, 2020. October the 11th to the 19th on 2020. Amen. Amen. If you want to view more of our services and you want to follow us, you may go to uh, subscribe at Hope Center of Christ YouTube 2019. We'd like to thank everyone that contributed the lilies last week who, who made it such an exceptionally beautiful 
altar last week. We really appreciate you for that. Thank you for those lilies. Uh, the Holy Communion will be next week. So remember, that's the time that we fellowship and we remember the Passover. We remember how the Lord has blessed us in his shed blood and how he's blessed us with his body that we may go in faith that by his stripes we are healed. Mother's Day. Mother's Day is on Sunday 512. There will be a special gift for the ladies. Amen. Then the National Day of Prayer on 5-2, we'd like to ask everyone to pray. To pray for your family, to pray for the churches, to pray for your friends, to pray for your co-workers, pray for the nation, pray for the men and women that sacrifice their lives so that we may have freedom here in America. Amen? Okay, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in your precious name, we come before you now. We come before you now boldly, dear Heavenly Father, because we know that we have your favor. And we know that we have your favor, God, because we are believers in your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the abundance that you give us, dear Heavenly Father. And dear God, as we come forward to give back some of what you've given us, we ask that you receive it, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you so very much. You are worthy to be praised. Receive our blessings now in our tithes and our offerings. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. And for our next song, uh, before the message, go ahead and turn in your songbooks to page 35 for Hold On Till You Bless Me. Again, that's page 35. <laughs> Yes, he is funny, isn't he? Praise the Lord. Praise We're together Lord. in God's house. Amen? Amen? We praise him. We give him honor. We give him glory for all that he's done for us and all that he will do for us. We're claiming, we're standing on the promises of God. We're holding on to God, believing that he will do what he's promised to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is a song about Jacob holding on to God for his promise to him. So we just want you to sing it with us. Hold on to you, bless me. If you give your offering, go ahead and stand up and join in. Yeah, <laughs> you're ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Jacob wrestled with the Lord the whole night long. God said, let me go for it's now the break of dawn. Jacob said, no, 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 no. I will not let you go. I'll keep holding on to you, Lord, till you bless me. Habakkuk says the time for your vision's been appointed. It quickly comes, you won't be disappointed. Though it tarries for a moment, you just wait. For surely it will come, it won't be late. Come on, Carmel. Just like Jacob, I will wrestle. I'll hold on tight to your promise, so oh Lord. You have promised me your blessing. It will come to pass, Lord, of this I am sure. Time. I know you won't fail me The vision 
Good morning, church. So excited for us all to be here together. And another opportunity to share God's word. Uh, my name is Katie Carnahan. Let's go ahead and begin the message with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this church, your church. Thank you for the freedom to proclaim our faith and praise your name boldly. Thank you for being our comforter in the hard times and our source of joy in the good times. Lord, I pray that your will be done in this message. I pray that you will speak through me and bring us restored hope and faith for the coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we're beginning a new message series that Pastor Sheila has named Because He Lives. He does. We will be looking at the eyewitness accounts of people who saw and spoke to our risen Lord Jesus Christ and the subsequent blessings they received. Last week was Easter, a day when we celebrate our Savior and his power over death. Jesus gave us the gift of grace, the gift of everlasting life, when he hung on the cross and died. He gave up his own life to save the lives of so many others. And then, Three days after Jesus died on the cross, his promise to rise from the dead was also fulfilled. But the gifts didn't stop there. For the next eight weeks, we will be discussing Jesus' 40 days on earth before he went home to be with the Father. After Jesus' resurrection and prior to his ascension, Jesus appeared to people, and each time he appeared to someone, he shared words that they desperately needed. Words of comfort and peace for the mourners. Words of reassurance and encouragement to continue his ministry. Now, the title of today's message is Comfort Lives Because He Lives. We know that Jesus was on a mission from God. He was sent to earth on a divine mission to save the whole world. It's like a scene from those Mission Impossible movies. They always say, your mission, should you choose to accept it? And thankfully, Jesus did accept the mission. He died for our sins, he rose again, and he saved us all. Mission complete. So why is it that Jesus didn't go back up to heaven immediately? He did what he was supposed to do. He died and he rose again. Why stick around for an extra 40 days if the mission was complete. Now, news about Jesus had undoubtedly spread to the masses. The people heard about the broken seal at his tomb and the stone being rolled away. Scripture tells us that people had even heard about Jesus' missing body because in Matthew 28, 13, it says that the elders paid soldiers to lie and tell people that Jesus' disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. And unfortunately, there were people who believed this lie, and people still today that believe that lie. Obviously, Jesus isn't going to get involved in the gossip. But he could have. Jesus could have easily dispelled all the rumors and made a huge gesture to set everyone straight. Jesus could have appeared in the Times Square and showed them that he was resurrected. He could have gotten everyone together and said, See, I told you, I'm alive. But that isn't Jesus' style. Furthermore, would that have been even convincing enough for the people? Probably not. They would have just come up with excuses. Maybe it was magic or an illusion or maybe Jesus didn't die on the cross after all. Jesus knew what he was doing. Convincing the townspeople wasn't the focus of the mission. In order to complete his mission, Jesus needed to show his followers that he was alive. He needed them to have complete faith that his promises don't 
ever return void. Death was not the end of his, his ministry. Jesus had more to teach them. Jesus needed to minister to the believers, his disciples, his friends, the other followers. He needed them to know that God's promise had been fulfilled and they were saved. And once he had proven that, without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus needed to then turn their grief into action. But Jesus' people needed to grieve before they could serve the kingdom effectively. And he needed to be the one to comfort them. Now, when I was in sixth grade, my parents got divorced. It was a difficult process full of lots and lots of emotions. In an effort to help our family through the difficult time, my mom and my younger sister and I, we went to Christian counseling. It was there that I learned about the five stages of grief. Denial, anger, depression, bargaining, and finally acceptance. Now, not all people go through all of those stages, and they might not occur in that order, but all five stages of grief have something in common. They are all tools to help us cope with loss and move forward. After Jesus' death and burial, his followers, the people who left Jesus and followed his teachings, they were deeply grieving. They were consumed by emotion, and they felt a tremendous loss. Their Messiah was gone. It was only natural that they would be going through the stages of grief, denial that he was dead, Denial that he would be resurrected. Depression, sadness. This was a confusing and deeply upsetting time for the people closest to Jesus. We had the soldiers' false accusations that the disciples had stolen Jesus' body compound that with their own grief and fear for the future. It was a lot to handle. Naturally, Jesus' disciples, both male and female, exhibited the stages of grief on their way to acceptance. And there was a lot of them to accept. While they were busy coping with the fact that Jesus was dead, they would soon have to switch gears and come to terms with Jesus' resurrection as well. So consumed with mourning, they had lost sight of God's promise. Jesus told them point blank he would rise again in three days. In Mark 8.31, Jesus said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. If only his people had realized that after three days, Jesus would return. If only they remembered Jesus' words, they could have spared themselves the anguish that they were feeling. But Jesus allowed them to grieve because he knew they grieved out of love. It's difficult to see the silver lining when you're surrounded by a dark cloud. All those mourning Jesus' death were so distracted by their grief that they couldn't remember and scripture says they didn't even understand after the fact of Jesus' promise to rise from the dead. The possibility of resurrection was the farthest thing from their minds. They had lost hope, and it was up for Jesus to comfort his children, to restore that hope. The first person who Jesus appeared to was Mary Magdalene. Seeing, I've talked about this before, seeing there are numerous Marys in the Bible, there's a lot of confusion around which Mary is which. It's hard to keep track. So allow me to clarify some points about Mary Magdalene and her relationship with Jesus. First point, Magdalene is not Mary's last name. That is true. Magdalene denotes her place of origin, which is most likely in Magdala, a city in Galilee. Several scriptures reference the women who came with Jesus from Galilee 
and one of the ladies in that group was Mary Magdalene. Second point, this is a big one. I, when I was younger, I thought this was true. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. False. There is no textual evidence in the Bible that says Mary was a prostitute. And what stood out to me was that Mary Magdalene is mentioned by name in the Bible a dozen times. So if the writers of the Gospels took the time to mention her name specifically, why then would they refer to her without saying her name? There's no correlation between the prostitute, the almost stoned adulteress, or even the theories that Mary Magdalene was Jesus' wife. Those are all untrue facts. All we can do is go by what Scripture tells us, and Scripture does not support any of these theories. Mary was possessed by demons. True. Mary is described in Mark 16:9 as a woman out of whom Jesus had driven seven demons. Jesus had performed a miracle in Mary's life, and from that moment on, she stayed by his side. Point number four, Mary Magdalene was a loyal follower of Jesus. Very, very true. Mary was Jesus' follower through it all. We know Mary began her journey with Jesus early on because she's first mentioned in Luke 8. Fast forward a bit. Mary was present at the crucifixion and stood with the other women as Jesus hung on the cross and took his final breath. And Mary was the first to go to Jesus' tomb. And the last point, point number five, Jesus visited Mary Magdalene after his resurrection. True. To further show how much Mary Magdalene means to both Jesus personally and to the ministry, she is the first person he appears to after his resurrection. Now, Jesus is the great comforter, and he begins to heal his people with Mary Magdalene. If you like to, at this time, turn in your Bibles or open that Bible app on your phone to John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. So that's the book of John, chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. Mary is in disbelief. The last time she saw Jesus' body, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus wrapped Jesus' body, placed it into Joseph's own tomb, and rolled a boulder in front of it. In Matthew 27, it says that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary watched the body be laid to rest with their own eyes. Here she is, returning to that same tomb, the stone has been rolled away, and it is empty. If we back up to the beginning of chapter 20, it says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. She ran to the disciples and told them that Jesus' body was missing. She discovered it. She reported it. Then the disciples went to the tomb and verified what Mary had told them. While they left to return home, Mary Magdalene stayed behind and wept. Even in the presence of two heavenly bodies, two angels, all that Mary could think about was Jesus' missing body. She is in complete denial of what is right in front of her. She is consumed by grief. 
and that connection that she had with Jesus before the crucifixion. The angels ask her, woman, why are you crying? The truth of Jesus' resurrection completely eludes her. By asking her this question, the angels are trying to point out the error in her emotional response while also trying to comfort her by acknowledging her grief. The comfort goes unnoticed. Perhaps Jesus will be more successful. In verse 14, it continues, At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Again, Mary is overwhelmed by her grief and doesn't recognize Jesus either. The denial continues. It seems strange that she wouldn't recognize someone that she had devoted her entire life to, but to give her, give her credit, it's also difficult to comprehend that Jesus really has risen from the dead. I mean, does he look the same, just with additional wounds from the crucifixion? So in verse 15, he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. The stages of grief continue. Mary Magdalene is in that bargaining stage, attempting to rationalize what has happened to Jesus' body. Mary is unable to accept that she is speaking to Jesus. She is searching for answers to her problem instead of opening her eyes and seeing the Lord. I'm sure we've all been there. The answer is right in front of us, but we simply can't see it. And why can't we see it? Is it because it's not the answer we expected? Is it too much to comprehend or too much to accept? Or do we simply need a little more time to figure it out? Maybe we just need a helpful nudge in the right direction. Perhaps we need someone to snap us out of the fog so we can realize truth standing in front of us. In verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Just by the sound of his voice, Mary Magdalene realizes this man is not a gardener, it's Jesus. And she can hardly control her joy. All of her worrying, all of her grieving disappears as she hugs Jesus in relief. His body wasn't stolen. He's alive. Verse 17, Jesus says to her, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said th these things to her. Jesus knows that Mary's excitement, excited. Who wouldn't be? One minute she was sobbing her eyes out, and now she's hugging the Lord, who she thought was dead and gone. But Jesus also needed to clarify that his time on earth was coming to an end. He's alive. He's conquered death. But he can't stay long. He has to complete his mission. And then he has to return to his father. So, why did Jesus begin his appearances with Mary Magdalene? First, Jesus needed to comfort her. Mary's heart was broken. She saw Jesus die. I can't even imagine. She saw his body laid to rest. She went to the tomb to anoint his body with spices, as was the Jewish custom. She was fully committed to stay by Jesus' side, even in death. Jesus also needed 
to send Mary Magdalene ahead to be his messenger. She, need, he, she needed to fur, further demonstrate her loyalty to Jesus by sharing the good news of his resurrection with others. Especially since once Jesus ascends, it will be her responsibility as one of the disciples to continue sharing the good news once Jesus has gone to be with the Father. Like a new employee, Mary got the job, but she needs some hands-on training before she can do it on her own. Jesus needed to give her that little nudge to regain perspective and grow her faith. Now, up to this point, all of Jesus' disciples have had the benefit of learning directly from him. Their faith was built on sight. They saw the miracles. They saw God working through his son with their very own eyes. They heard the parables, the other teachings. Now their faith was about to change. They would no longer be able to walk up to Jesus and ask him a question like they had done so many times before. The disciples would have to rely on what Jesus had taught them and the example of his humility, his wisdom and love to continue spreading the gospel. They would have to rely on true faith, blind faith, the same faith that you and I practice today. Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene began the final training his followers needed to continue growing the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted the people to know. He wants us to know that even though he died, he conquered death and he will never leave us. Even something as final as death is no match for the power of God. Not even death can separate us from God's love. Paul said it perfectly in Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. We are part of God's family and family is forever. The connection that we have with God cannot be broken. He is our comfort and our strength. In times of grief, we can turn to the Lord for comfort. We will still feel the pain, the sadness, the loss. And while we wish that God could take away all of those feelings, they're a part of life. Even so, God will comfort us. He will lessen that pain bit by bit. If we keep our eyes on him, he will heal our broken hearts and help us find that joy once again, that joy that Mary Magdalene felt instantly upon seeing Jesus and realizing he is the risen Lord. Jesus will walk through the trials with us. I'm reminded of the Footprints poem. If you're not familiar, in that poem, a man has a dream that he's walking on the beach with God. But he notices that during the most trying times of his life, there is only one set of footprints in the sand instead of two. The man questions the Lord. He asks God, why did you leave me when I needed you the most? But I love God's response in this poem. My precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Those times of trial that we experience, where we make it through the trial and we look back and think, how did I make it through that? God 
was carrying you. He was helping you. He was pushing you up that mountain. He was pulling you out of that pit of despair. God is with us through it all. So do you need comfort today? Are you experiencing loss? Do you feel like your heart is broken? Do you have a void in your heart that feels like a part of you is missing? God is with you. I wish we could be like Mary Magdalene. I wish we could run into Jesus' arms. I really do. I wish we could feel the instant relief and joy that Mary felt when she hugged him. But know this. We can still experience closeness with God. We can speak to God through prayer. We can feel his presence when we praise him. We learn more about him by reading scripture. We see him working in our lives and the lives of others. We know that Jesus is alive. We know he rose from the dead on the third day just like he said he would. Jesus conquered death. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene because he knew she was the perfect candidate to get that ball rolling for phase two of the mission. Jesus needed his disciples to believe. Jesus needed his disciples to have big faith so they could continue his ministry after he ascended. Jesus needed those 40 days to get his disciples ready to spread the good news. And today, we are his disciples, and we too are commissioned to share Jesus with others. You have been chosen to continue Jesus' legacy until he returns. John 15, 16 through 17 reads, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Jesus chose us. We are an integral part of his mission. If we follow his commands, scripture says we will bear fruit and we will continue to grow the kingdom. We have been chosen to share God's word with others as instruments of his love, his peace, his comfort. So we need to share his words. We need to share his love. We need to share his hugs. We may not be able to hug Jesus, but we sure can hug each other. I want to challenge you this week. Hug someone. There's something about moms. Whenever I'm in a bad mood, I'm not feeling right, something feels off, it may not be anything specific, just an emotional girl that I am, and something about when my mom gives me a hug. I don't even know something's wrong, and she'll give me a hug and go, oh, what's wrong? And then all of a sudden I'm sobbing uncontrollably and I have no idea what's happening. There may be people in your life who are going through trials, who are going through sorrow, and all you have to do is give them a hug. Give them a hug so that way they know they are loved. Whether you know what they're going through, whether you know if they're going through a difficult time or not, share God's love with a hug. Now, I'm a little biased because I am a hugger. You can ask Joel. I'm a primo hugger. But there's something about a real hug, not the side hug with the tap. A real hug that can change you, that can make your day even better. After all, one hug from Jesus and Mary Magdalene's joy was restored. And if you're not a hugger, my sister, my best friend, not a hugger. If you're not a hugger, that's okay. Send a virtual hug. Text a heart emoji to your contacts. 
Just let people know that you care. Let people know that you're thinking about them. It doesn't require any words. No expl explanation is necessary. Share Jesus with the world one hug at a time. Or a smile. Or a wave. Or one of Jim's high fives. Let people know that you see them and that you care. We're blessed to receive God's comfort in our lives, and we are commanded to share that same comfort with others. So in closing, I want to read 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Jesus is our source of comfort. But for the people who have lost sight, who are in that dark cloud, or who don't know the Lord, be that source of comfort for them. Show them it's going to be all right. It's going to get better. You're just in that valley. But with God's help, you will make it to the top of that hill once again. If the worship team can please come forward at this time. And if the congregation can please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Brothers and sisters, walk with the Lord this week and always. Find comfort in Jesus and share that comfort with others. Practice your faith as Jesus' disciple, by sharing the good news. Jesus is alive. God loves you, and so do I. He is alive, and we are more than conquerors through Christ. Amen? Thank you. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Praise the Lord, Hope Center. That was a message of hope and what Christ did for us after the cross, after he rose from the dead. And we give him praise and honor and glory for the fact that he is here. He is with us today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ooh.
it all has gone wrong Though we're hungry and poor For our faith we are shown Though in danger and threatened with death This I know There is nothing, nothing. 